Today I confirm absolutely tragic news that we have recovered Mohammed Shah Sabani's remains within this wooded area off of Hedgeley Lane. I broke that news to his family and they are naturally devastated and beside themselves. That's news they hoped they would never have to hear and I hope that I would be wrong and that we would find Shah alive. So this area, whilst having the M40 running beside it, it's quite isolated and it will be known to only a select group of people. There is a BMW X5 that features really heavily on the investigation. We know from witnesses that this car was loitering in the area after the 7th of May. So I'm asking members of the public who might have seen that car or other vehicles or strangers in and around this wooded area after the 7th of May to come forward and speak to us because your information is absolutely crucial to either implicate or eliminate individuals from the investigation. Yo, what's going on people? It's your boy It Pancho, back at you again with another video. Now, this next story that we're about to get into is the story of Mohammed Shah Shabani. Apologies if I've got the name wrong. He was known to his family and friends by the name Shah. Now, before we jump into the video, I just want to show you the campaign that his family went on to try and find him after he disappeared on the 7th of May earlier on this year. Broken? Empty, distraught, lost. It just just gets harder every day because you don't know what's happened. It's every day you're waiting. Every day your heart breaks a little bit more. We need your help to to bring Shah home. It's been far too long. Even a tiny bit of information you give us might lead us to Shah. You might think, oh, it's nothing, but you never know. That could be a lead to finding Shah. Any little bit of information you give, you'll be helping a distraught, broken family. Shah, wherever you are, just know that we love you and we will never stop looking for you. We will find you and we will bring you home. Please. Just give my brother back to us. His family went on a campaign to multiple media outlets and they also even made an appearance at a speaker's corner in Hyde Park to try and see if they could get help from the public to try and find Shah. Now, as you've seen at the start of the video, his body has recently been found. But before we get into that, I'm going to take you on a little backstory for you guys that don't know what's gone on. And before we get into it, I just want to take this time out to say rest in peace to Shah and my condolences go out to anyone who's been affected by the situation. And I know his family campaigned really hard to find him and my thoughts are with them right now so i'd appreciate it if you could leave your condolences down in the comment section below i'd appreciate that massively so Shah had lived in heston hounslow west london and used to be an employee at heathrow airport he disappeared seven months ago on the 7th of may and police had feared that he may have ended up out of his debt in cannabis dealing possibly falling into debt to people after losing his job police know that on the day he disappeared Shah had traveled to acton police station arriving at approximately 1 45 in the afternoon it's possible that certain people may have had the impression that he would have had about £3,800 returned to him during this visit, but this did not happen. But it is believed that he may have had a set of number plates restored to him along with two mobile phones. He then travelled from the Acton area about 3pm on a journey to Hounslow. His Audi Q3, which had the registration LC67CXS, was captured on CCTV travelling south on Hanworth Road towards Witten Road in Hounslow at around 3.17 in the afternoon. He was then due to collect about £5,000 at a business premises on Derby Road in Hounslow. His white Audi Q3 had arrived at about 3.19pm. Police believe that Shaw was driving. His car then left at 3.47pm. Initially, the police had thought he left the premises with about £10,000 on him, but it's now believed that Shaw wasn't driving the car and he was not seen leaving the premises. The Q3 then entered Park Road and was subsequently moved on to Camden on false registration plates. The Q3 was found about a month later, abandoned carrying false number plates and was riddled with bullet holes. DCI Mott Q leading the investigation confirmed that his team has now ruled out the possibility that Shaw was in his own car at the time it was shot at. The vehicle was recovered with ballistic damage on Wednesday the 19th of June in Camden. He said, It's my assessment that those who handled Shah's car after his death were involved in the shooting incident, which is unconnected to his death. We never recovered any weapons or had any reports of personal injuries. One of the other suspicious vehicles officers still need information about is a Blue Range Rover Evoque using false number plates 
Estate MF13 AOT, which was at the corner of Derby Road at about 3.20pm on Tuesday the 7th of May at the same time Shah was there. Officers know the car later travelled to Ilford on those plates but has not been seen since. It had a lot of body damage and might have been passed on. The Met Police have made eight arrests in connection with their investigation but have not yet charged anyone in relation to the death. Detectives say they have encountered a wall of silence from people who may have information. A 23-year-old man was arrested on Tuesday the 2nd of July on suspicion of perverting the course of justice but is being released under investigation. Two men, aged 22 and 25, were arrested on Monday 8th of July on suspicion of murder, kidnap, abduction and perverting the course of justice. The 22-year-old remains on bail while the 25-year-old was released under investigation. A 20-year-old man was arrested on suspicion of conspiracy to commit murder, kidnap and perverting the course of justice on Wednesday the 31st of July and he was subsequently released under investigation pending further inquiries. A 19-year-old man was arrested on Thursday 29th on suspicion of conspiracy to commit murder and kidnap and he was released under investigation. A 22-year-old man was arrested at an address in West London on Tuesday the 22nd of October on suspicion of conspiracy to murder. In addition, a search warrant was executed at a residential address in West London. He was later released under investigation. A 22-year-old man was arrested on suspicion of murder on Monday, 9th of December. He's been bailed to return to a police station at a later date. And a 67-year-old woman who's been arrested at Heathrow Airport on Tuesday the 17th of December, which was only a couple days ago, on suspicion of perverting the course of justice, assisting an offender and making a false statement, has been bailed pending further inquiries. Now, as you can see so far, that's a lot of people that they've arrested, but because of this wall of silence that they keep talking about, we just don't see anybody that's being charged with the murder. Now, if there is any more arrest or any of these people get charged with the murder or anything to do with the situation, as always, I'll keep you guys updated. Now, at the start of the video, as you've seen, the lead detective had put out a statement saying that Shah's body had been found today. So let's now take a look at the aftermath of what's happened since Shah's body has been found. This is the area where Shah's body has been found. Take a look at this. So today, police who were investigating the murder of Shaw discovered his remains in a wooded area in Beaconsfield, South Buckinghamshire, more than 15 miles away from where he lived. Police said the discovery of his remains marked a significant development in the case. Specialist officers and experts had been searching close to Gerrard's Cross Wood for several days and are expected to remain in the area for another three weeks. They continued to search the large area near Hedgridley Lane off the A40 between Beaconsfield and Gerrard's Cross as a part of their extensive inquiry. DCI McHugh had said, Today we confirm that we have recovered Mohammed Shah Shabani's remains. I met with Shah's family and I broke the awful news to them, something that I hope I would never have to do. This has been devastating news for Shah's family at this truly unimaginable time. Shah had everything to live for and was loved by everyone. Not only was he murdered, he was prevented a decent and dignified burial. I believe that Shah's discovery is something that his killer or killers were confident would never happen, and whilst the worst possible news for his loved ones, it presents a significant springboard for our investigation. I believe this area is known to a small group of people. However, as I've said before, we have a substantial amount of land left to search and it is a very challenging terrain. Officers, police staff and experts have been forced to build bridges and walkways and divert significant volumes of water. This area is fairly isolated and you'd probably have to know it existed as opposed to it being stumbled across. It is not visible to a passing motorist but a car parked up would possibly appear out of the norm to locals. The wooded area has evidence of spent shot gun cartridges. These are not connected to Shah's death, but I'd be keen to speak to people who use this area, particularly on or after the 7th of May. This is painstakingly and complex work as we search for evidence and we are likely to be here for several more weeks while we complete this important task. I'm so grateful to the local community who have been so understanding and supportive of the police operation. I do apologise for the inconvenience that you are experiencing. We'll continue to strive to keep disruption to a minimum. So, a couple of things to take from his statement right there. Now, he goes on to say that only a few people would know about the area, right? So could this have been a premeditated attack on Shaw? We won't know just yet. And, and it's also interesting 
how those shotgun cartridges were found, but it had nothing to do with them. I wonder if people have been there before, maybe something's happened before, maybe the people that have killed them, maybe they've killed somebody there as well, or maybe they've attempted to scare someone and they've took them there before, but like you were saying, it definitely seems like the people know where this place is, and it's going to be interesting to see if any more evidence comes from the situation and where those shotgun cartridges have come from. DCI McHugh had also revealed for the first time that a key suspect vehicle, the black BMW X5, on clone plates of YC67MFY, was seen in the Hedger Lee Lane area in the days after Shah's disappearance on Friday the 7th of May this year. The vehicle, which had been stolen overnight from Reading Road in Farnborough, Hampshire, on Friday the 8th of February, was recovered by police on Tuesday the 3rd of August in Hounslow. He said, A stolen black BMW on clone registration plate, YC67MFY, was seen on Hedger Road in the days following the 7th of May where Shaw was reported missing. This vehicle had two occupants and appeared to be loitering in the area. This car was subsequently recovered in Hounslow. We are really interested in understanding who was using this vehicle, particularly on the 7th of May and the following weeks. Please try and recall if you saw anything you felt was suspicious at this time, whether the BMW or any other vehicle or people or anything else that seemed out of place. Do not discount anything as being too insignificant to tell us about. It could prove to be a significant piece of the jigsaw in establishing what happened to Shaw. If there is any update regarding the BMW situation, or if there is any more evidence in the case, as always, I'll keep you guys updated. So yeah, very sad case, and I watched this case all the way back when it happened. Now, I know I wasn't reporting on stories then, but I have been following the situation, and I'm glad to know that he's been found. Now, unfortunately, he's passed away, and that is so sad, but it's peace of mind that he's been found now, and it is sad that he won't get a dignified burial. But again, I just want to say, rest in peace to Shaw, and my condolences and thoughts go out to his family and friends and anybody who's been affected by the situation but let me know what you guys think of this in the comment section below give the video a little like thank you for getting me to 1k subscribers i'm gonna try and push for 1.5k subscribers by the end of the year so if you're new around here i'd appreciate if you could hit the subscribe button and the notification bell i've got a new instagram page it's ape honcho with the number zero not the letter o so that's ape honcho with the number zero and not the letter o but i'll leave that link down in the description anyway feel free to give me a little follow but yeah it's been your boy ape honcho and i'm out